And for more about China's anti-corruption efforts, I'm joined here in the studio now by my colleague, Hona. Hona, thanks for joining Hello, us. Hello, Rachel. Now, you've done several stories on the anti-corruption campaign. Um, tell us more about the recent efforts. Well, China stands firm on its anti-corruption promises, no matter where the wrongdoers flee. In a recent case, the fugitive Yang Xiaoju, who fled the country 13 years ago, surrendered to authorities in Beijing on November the 16th. It marks another victory in the country's campaign against corruption. The former deputy director of the construction department of East China's Zhejiang province is accused of embezzling 250 million yuan, or about 36.3 million U.S. dollars. She was the most wanted person on China's red notice list of 100 corrupt officials released by Interpol last year. And she is also the 37th fugitive to have recently returned to the country. Most of them were persuaded to do so. To hold them cr criminally accountable, China has the right to use repatriation and extradition rules in accordance with bilateral treaties and the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. What prompted Yang to enter days on the run was not that the Chinese government had been pressuring her family after being charged by authority in the U.S. and detained there thanks to close law enforcement cooperation. She had no option but to return and confess to her crime. Beijing's hunt for corrupt fugitives is justifiable and in line with its efforts to safeguard national interest and promote fair market competition, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Now, the central leadership's frugality campaign, which uh, began uh, four years ago, uh, features the eight-point rules which aim to curb extravagance. Um, tell us what's been achieved since that campaign began in 2012. Well, four years on, the campaign has never showed signs of fading. Authorities are striving to maintain close ties with people and eliminate both tigers or corrupt senior officials and flies or corrupt lower-level officials. According to the CPC's anti graft agency, nearly 200,000 former party and government staff have been punished for violating rules in the past four years. Many of them held senior positions. And these people were involved in more than 146,000 cases. The CBC Central Commission for Discipline Inspection says about a quarter of the cases involved in the use of public vehicles and dining out on public funds. Chinese President Xi Jinping discussed the fight against corruption in his opening and closing speeches at the G20 summit in Hangzhou in September, underscoring the importance of the issue. And on the last day of the summit, she said the leaders of the world's 20 largest economies agreed to promote policies to prevent corruption in the public sector. She proposed the member countries cooperate in the capture and repatriation of former officials that flee justice by taking refuge in other countries, as well as the recovery of stolen funds. Back to you, Rachel. All right, Hona, thank you very much.